who's a good baseball player? Just you staring know. down the corner. <laughs> good morning, Rolling Meadows, or should I say good evening, good depending on how your day is rolling. This is the August 21st, 2018 Committee of the Whole meeting, and we're beginning with Mr. Crumstock. Thank you very much. Um, we actually have three items uh, to discuss today. Most of them I'm doing the intros for, and the first intro that we're starting with is our 2019-2023 comprehensive uh, plan that we call CIP. Um, we do have a small PowerPoint presentation that will be done by the finance director, Melissa Gallagher. And again, this is a plan that really is kicking off some of our documents for the 2019 budget. This is a document that we do utilize when we go to bond council. It's also something that we actually use for forecasting and some of our additional work. Again, really what we're looking at is our overall documents and some of our capital improvements and some of our financial um, health of the community and our funds. So with that, um, and again, this is really a nice snapshot. Not a lot of discussion that goes on with this. As we've talked before, some of these projects might be in a bond that we might be selling at a different time. And some of these projects obviously are not down um, in stone because as everybody on the council knows, um, especially with street programs, we have moved projects from year to year because we can't afford them all. But at the same point in time, um, it's good time to have these discussions. And those items that do make it into the 2019 budget, they would be in the budget document itself that you will be seeing in September, in October, in November, and passing in November, hopefully. And then obviously as each of those items come into play in 2019, you would actually be approving each resolution that would be needed for each one of that. With that, I do turn over for the short PowerPoint presentation that we have for the five-year capital improvement program and financial forecast for 2019-2023 with Melissa Gallagher, finance director for the city of Raleigh Meadows. Thank you, Mr. Crumstock. Uh, City Council, uh, tonight we're going to, as uh, Mr. Crumstock mentioned, we're going to give a brief PowerPoint presentation on the Capital Improvement Program. And with that, I do want to uh, draw your attention to the, within the agenda packet itself, we do have uh, just a brief summary. We have the budget planning calendar, and on the city's website, we do have the capital improvement plan. It's quite a big document, so feel free to download that. Uh, in our audience tonight, we have uh, one of our members from the Capital Improvement Plan, Steve Hollish. I also want to thank not only Steve, but Bob Loesch, a resident member, Jack Elithirio, our alderman, uh, John Diastis, our former alderman, Tim, Tim Bimbas, and uh, also on the committee is Public Works Director Fred Vogt, Assistant Public Works Director Rob Horn, and myself. And we want to say a big thank you to the group. Uh, it's been the sixth year that the Capital Improvements Program has been reviewed and discussed by the Ad Hoc Capital improvements program and there are some recommendations that we're going to go through with the PowerPoint. And As City Manager Crumstock mentioned, the CIP is a financial planning tool. It's only a snapshot um, into future capital needs and <coughs> our finances. Uh, the Ad Hoc, Ad Hoc Capital Improvements Committee has been integral to this process. We meet uh, as often as we can. We're actually going to be meeting this fall as well to continue uh, the review of the projects. Uh, we have discussed with the City Council uh, budget parameters and capital improvement program pa parameters, and those will be throughout not only the capital plan, but also through the budget. The CIP is reviewed each year. Uh, staff takes a lot of time, all of our departments take a lot of time to review every project, make sure that uh, it's right aligned to where it should be, and through uh, the process we look at all projects in total. The, pa the capital improvement plan will include the 911 fund, utilities fund, vehicle and equipment replacement fund, building and land fund, and the state motor fuel tax fund and the local road fund. Just as a reminder, uh, though you'll see a few things um, in the general fund, uh, the only items that we really show you there is just for planning purposes for the comprehensive plan update and the zoning code update. The police department's vehicles are budgeted in the general fund, but we show them here. That way you have the detail in the capital improvement pages. 
Uh, just as a basic overview, and there is um, an executive summary within the capital improvement plan. When you download that, you can read that. This is just a high-level overview. But also within the capital improvement plan will be detailed sheets per project. And right now, tonight's discussion is we just give you a, br a brief overview. Uh, as we've mentioned before, the local road fund has increased funding, but there is still a need there, and that's, of course, the city council's area. Uh, recall that the city did approve a natural gas tax, uh, which will be in effect for the local road fund. Uh, chargebacks are not at their full funding. That's the cost allocation between funds. Uh, to fully fund those, we've been trying as best as possible. Uh, the Ad Hoc Capital Improvements Program, or committee, has been reviewing this program for about six years now. We've been meeting since March. Uh, they're very good discussions. Uh, as you, you can see, we ended our meetings on in July, and we'll continue in the fall. This uh, information also is in your packet and in the capital improvement program itself. We have the recommendations to the city council. So what happens through the process is through um, all our meetings, we, uh, and there are minutes of the meetings in the capital improvement program, we discuss and get feedback from the committee. And at the July meeting, uh, we wrap up with recommendations or suggestions to the city council. And if you look back, those are all documented in the CIP. And this year, we came up with six as a committee. And one of these is something similar uh, as in past years. But recommending that the city council, of course, determines the annual street program expense amount to be at a minimum of $1.5 million each or more each year. The second one is uh, continuing what we've done before with the annual street program planning calendar beginning in September at the committee of the whole meeting to ensure that we are planning for the program for next year and ensuring that the, uh, the contract award for engineering takes place sooner. And that schedule helps us uh, result in savings for the city. The third recommendation is that city staff will develop a strategy for future recommendations to the city council for maintenance, repair, and or replacement of city infrastructure. In particular, you'll notice that there are footnotes throughout the CIP, but the public works building at 3200 Central Road, known as the old public works building, but that's a very important piece that we've kept in as a placeholder and for future discussions. The fourth uh, item is that the capital, Ad Hoc Capital Improvements Committee recommends that the staff determine which infrastructure projects are shovel ready for bonds, and to that extent, which ones can be designed or engineered in the next course of months. And we are going to, as we mentioned, uh, September through November, we will be holding meetings with the Ad Hoc <coughs> Capital Improvements Committee to provide for further feedback. And right now, the uh, Public Works Department, uh, Public Works Director, and Assistant Public Works Director are working on a lot of those items right now. City staff will then also complete a review of the update for the utility rate study that's being worked on right now. And the city staff will work with the city manager and the, city, and the finance director to prioritize capital improvements. And this is obviously part of the budget process as well. These are the recommendations to the city council from the Ad Hoc Capital Improvements Committee this year. And we appreciate their time. A couple charts here, the outstanding debt service. Uh, this is a little bit different look to what we've had in the, in the past. And that's because we have a lot of our bonds that have matured. And as you can see, we still have two bonds that are left on our outstanding <coughs> bonds, about $3.8 million still outstanding that go out to 2023. We have the 2012 or 2002B bond, that was one that was refunded for savings, and that's paid from the utilities fund. And then we have the 2012 or the 2004 bond, as it's known, it's paid from the general fund, and that matures in 2023. What we did here is this pie, this uh, graph will show you what we have had since 2013, just as a look back, and then the look forward, taking the graph that you just saw, out to 2023, showing you that our debt service previously was about $3 million annually, all in with all our bond payments, principal and interest, and with the current bond discussions that we've been having internally, uh, the annual debt service payment amount is estimated about $2 million, and that's including with the fire station. 
uh, project. And that goes out, we haven't added it to the graph, but I'm just showing you a comparison that the city had been paying about $3 million in debt service. And with the new estimated bonds, it'd be about $2 million. And that's including old and new. In our capital improvement plan, what we do is uh, some charts. And that way you can see at a high level where we're at. We bring this down as a pie chart showing you uh, all of the types based on the category. So building and, and land infrastructure, water, sewer, stormwater, streets and sidewalks, vehicles and equipment. That way you get a high level overview to see what it looks like when we're looking at all our projects. And this is proposed projects for 2019. And the city manager, I would say, has already made some cuts and has deferred items based on project needs and project timelines. Um, the proposed budget does have a, sometimes a different look because of the fact that we're still right-sizing it to what the city can actually do and afford. As a comparison, last year's proposed um, projects were about $9.5 million. Uh, there's a little bit of an increase in the building and land infrastructure, and we'll get into that in just a moment. So as mentioned, the general fund is not a capital project fund, but it is our largest operating fund, and it does pay some items. And one of those items, of course, are it sponsors all of our economic development activities. And to that end, the City Council did approve the comprehensive plan and zoning code update. And that's shown in the, the CIP, but then it's also shown in the general fund. So work is taking place now in 2018 and will continue in 2019. The general fund does pay for the police department vehicles, and these are budgeted in this fund, but they're not considered capital. We consider those commodities. We do not depreciate those. Uh, those are expensed in the year that they're uh, paid for. These three, for this year, we have three police department vehicles, and we have the mobile fleet software proposed for replacement. Moving on to the 911 fund, this again is just sort of a high level overview. Within the CIP, as I mentioned, when you dig into it, you will see the individual information and pieces with that. What we like to show you is, and I'm not gonna go through all of the items, but just um, basically where the fund is estimated to end in 2018 and where well, an estimate is ending in 2019, showing you that pretty much the only revenue into the fund are is the tax levy. And then we have what we have contractually for expenditures. The city uh, does contract with Northwest Central Dispatch for its emergency communication dispatch services, and it's all accounted in the 911 fund. The 2019 proposed budget, uh, the levy is held level from last year, so year over year, 651,500 is the tax levy proposed for 2019. And as a reminder that the city does have a fund balance policy and this fund is in parameters. And the major purchase that's coming up um, is the radio in replacement for 911. And that'll be taking place throughout beginning in 2018. Some work is being done, and then in 2019. I do want to mention just one item for 911. While there is not a proposed increase, we have been looking at that through scenarios, and it's something that over time that fund does need another slight increase, uh, incremental over time for annual expenditures to this fund. Moving on to vehicle and equipment replacement fund. Again, showing you that really chargebacks are the, the primary funding for this uh, fund. That means that other funds pay this fund to run and operate. And then the expenditures, as you would expect, are capital. So all the expenditures going out. There's a lot of expenditures going out in the last couple years. And so you'll see a little bit of a dip in fund balance, but it does build up when you look at the plan overall and the financial forecast. We have increased incrementally the chargebacks, but again, they're not fully funded. And this is the fourth year of repayment of the $100,000 amount that's going to be paid each year over the next 10 years. And that was a repayment of a million dollar payable. And just running through the vehicle and equipment replacement uh, projects, and of course, uh, we're just gonna give you the, the the high level overview, but again, with each one of these lines, you will see that there is a detailed project page. That way you get a little more information. And staff is always happy and able to answer any questions that you might have after you dig into this plan. Uh, the Vehicle and Equipment Replacement Fund does take care of equipment. So you'll see there police equipment, fire equipment. We do have our fire, fire vehicles and all our community development vehicles and our public works vehicles budgeted here. 
and there are routine replacements throughout this program. The chargebacks that are funding this have been carefully calculated throughout the years to make sure that the funds are available for these purchases that are taking place. Informa information technology, as we know now, and throughout many years, um, and we've been building our program, is that that is a key part to our infrastructure. It is considered infrastructure, and with that being said, we're doing our upgrades as planned. Uh, and as you can see, one of our big ones, we're, we'll be in our second year um, in ERP phases next year in 2019 to wrap up uh, probably early 2020 is what we're expecting, but there are many other items that we're looking at for uh, continued replacement and improvements. Public works and equipment, I do want to footnote here, while it does say emergency standby generator, the ad hoc capital improvements committee did request that this was added back to the plan, even though that the city council did uh, did not approve that. It's a placeholder at this time for city council to review. In no way is it part of the budget. It is something that is brought back per the uh, request of the ad hoc capital committee. There were some feelings on the ad hoc capital committee in terms of the members' thoughts that it's continuity of operations and some of the things they wanted to look at going forward. Uh, as you can see here, public works vehicles. Uh, those are planned in all in $2.2 million worth of replacements, similar amounts from last year, from year over year. The building and land fund, uh, this is one fund, as we've mentioned, we were, we've been starting some of our one-on-one -on -one meetings with uh, our aldermen and mayor. And as we've mentioned, uh, the fund balance, the revenues in are solely chargebacks with some of the revenues coming in for the park from the park district. But that really is the pool of funding. Um, with that being said, we can only increase as much as possible to cover those the capital outlay with some of the other contractual services. So this fund does need to be looked at going forward in terms of potential bond items, infrastructure improvements. Outstanding items not included in the CIP are the fire stations and old public work items, but they do uh, those are accounted separately. This gives you a high-level overview with some highlights there. I'm not going to go through each one that is in the plan itself. But what we wanted to make sure uh, you knew that the, um, the prioritization is happening at this point in time. It's not listed this way now. But at this point, uh, we wanted to just make sure that there is that is taking place. Uh, HVAC system, I'll just mention here, it's in the final phase at City Hall. And uh, we're continually looking at these, these dollars. Uh, about a million dollars worth of infrastructure improvement citywide for uh, the cities and buildings. Moving on to utilities fund, our second operating, our second largest operating fund. It's a very important fund. Uh, again, the utility rate study that was performed by Baxter and Woodman, the engineering company, uh, confirm uh, that did that study back uh, several years ago. That's being updated currently. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do now is look at what was proposed in 2015 and see what they're recommending in 2018 and bring that back to City Council. As you can see, charges for services really are the primarily the largest amount for funding for the utilities fund. And there are, on the expenditure side, one of the largest pieces, of course, is our water supply from JAWA, the City of Chicago, followed by our capital outlay. Uh, it's an important fund that we're looking at also, too, eventually over time, to look at a proposed fund balance policy. We did follow it up uh, in terms of what the rates are. The current method funding methodology that we've been using is about a 7% increase for water, a 5% increase for sewer, and a 5% increase for stormwater. Within this plan, that does also occur in terms of our estimates, uh, and we're looking at that for the proposed budget. And that's what this financial forecast uh, also notes. On this page here, this again gives you that high level overview, and no way are we going to go through all those items. <laughs> but I do want to mention within the plan itself, when you go and you open that, you'll see photos and you'll see a lot more detail for each one of these line items. Uh, the Ad Hoc Capital Committee, however, has gone through each one of these and made corrections to the plan, and uh, it's been very useful to have their feedback. So also noted here is that not all projects included in this um, um, in the plan makes it into the budget, but then also due to a variety of reasons, uh, some of the proposed items in the budget even uh, further get deferred. 
I did note here that some projects will be identified for bonds. Obviously, underground infrastructure such as water mains and sewer mains, those are key items for bond issuance. And again, the feedback from the utility rate study will help us there. The state motor fuel tax. Uh, this is the per capita amount that we receive from the state of Illinois from Department of uh, So, I'm sorry, the uh, estimated fund balance is pretty much what you, you take in, you're spending out. So your revenues coming in are about 600,000 and that's what we're spending for the annual street program in terms of street resurfacing. There are restrictions on its use by the state of Illinois and the council obviously each year approves what the expenditures are going to be from Department of Transportation. Uh, staff continues to monitor these, expend these revenues from Springfield as far as any impacts. Right now we're seeing fairly amount, uh, even amount of about 600,000 annually from what we've received in the past. I did want to footnote here, I won't footnote this again, but again, uh, as in the 2018 budget, uh, based on an audit that was done by the state of Illinois, we now um, need to maintain those dollars within the fund. They request that those funds are not transferred to another fund, although they were accounted for properly, but it's just their preference that they just stay in the state motor fuel tax fund. With that being said, some of the expenses that were in the state motor fuel tax now are in the local road fund. Electricity, so street light electricity, snow removal supplies, and then signal, signal markings were moved over to local road. The local road fund has a diverse uh, pie uh, chart in terms of revenues. Um, it is something that uh, the city council is looking at in terms of making sure it's revert diverse and then also adding to where we where possible. And then expenditures out, maintaining as high of a street program as possible. The Ad Hoc Capital Improvements Committee really focused a lot of their time reviewing those projects. Um, also uh, had a discussion from the city engineer at the end of the, the July meeting on some items as well. Uh, funding is primarily provided by the property tax levy, home rule motor fuel tax, and the local road and bridge tax, and then also the natural gas tax um, to be effective in 2019. The property tax was increased last year to 900,000, and the proposed budget is a million dollars for this year. Um, and that was discussed in the draft property tax levy at the July Committee of the Whole meeting. The proposed budget uh, or capital improvements for 2019 for the local road fund are listed here. Um, the annual street program reconstruction and resurfacing are broken out, they're split out. So as you can see there, 825,000 for reconstruction, 500,000 for resurfacing. Just as a reminder that there's 600,000 also sitting in state motor fuel tax. Roadway resurfacing, Kirchhoff Road is there for 500,000, and then the, proje the projects go on from there. I did wanna just footnote as well from the ad hoc capital improvement suggestions, uh, maintaining it at least as possible, a uh, $1.5 million, this proposed um, capital improvement plan does take those recommendations into effect. And all in pro proposed projects are $3.3 .3 million for uh, the local road fund. So again, this is really a snapshot. Uh, you're taking about 300 pages and, and putting it on a PowerPoint, so there's a lot of detail. Uh, we are, of course, happy to answer any questions, but sometimes it, you have to look into it for a while and come back and ask staff. Uh, it's really one of the key steps in the budget process. And as a reminder, we will be releasing the budget, the proposed budget, in the September 11th uh, meeting that night. Uh, with the ERP, we've got a little additional um, duties, so we uh, need a little bit of an extension. So September 11th, usually it's the last meeting in October or August, so we appreciate that. Um, but just really, again, as a reminder, we'll be setting those one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, with council and the mayor to uh, review the budget. So we'll, we'll get uh, those set up at some point. And, then, and that's my presentation, and happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Um, any questions from council? Tonight? Seeing none, Mr. Thank you, Melissa. You're and, uh, welcome. I know we all wanted to talk a couple more hours about this presentation. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Mr. Comstock, Downtown Lighting. Thank you very much. Um, obviously, I uh, want to reiterate before we go to number two, we do appreciate the Ad Hoc Capital Improvement Committee um, for all their work and their extra hours. They typically meet about an hour, hour and a half before a city council meeting on those dates that you saw. 
Um, and we do have a new member who will be joining real soon, Alderman Rob Williams. So you'll be getting really close to what's in this uh, document soon, too. But the second item that we have for the committee, the whole meeting, obviously, is holiday decoration enhancement uh, discussion. And obviously, Public Works Director Fred Vogt is up here, and Superintendent uh, Don Wenzel is behind me, too. I had to make sure that he was behind me, because typically I look at the right, because that's where Assistant Public Works Director Rob Horn sits, but they're all sitting on my left over here. Um, this is a discussion about enhancement. Obviously, it's a preliminary discussion, knowing your feedback. Um, just some thoughts that have come back from other comments that we've heard from residents and also, obviously, some aldermen. And um, one thing that I would tell you is that this is just a first discussion. So if the council decides that you want to ask additional information or change a scope, please let us know. And again, nothing is in stone at this point in time. It's just holiday decorations for a period of time that the city of Rolling Meadows puts up for the seasonal look of the area. Um, with that, I do turn it over to Public Works Director Fred Vogt, who will start this off. Thank you, Barry. And yes, emphasize here from staff, this is preliminary. Certainly the options that the mayor and council can have once you have read and listened to the information and the details on costs and uh, the like from Don Wenzel, uh, we can proceed with one or more of these locations. We can proceed and get more information. We can uh, choose to not do anything at this time, Any, anything in between. Uh, um, we're wel welcoming the um, discussion on it and input from uh, the mayor and council. Um, as I said, Don will go over details, but I just wanted to give a, a few introductory comments just within the uh, report. We broke this um, effort uh, for information into several areas, one being starting at the east end of Kirchhoff Road Gateway Park, uh, secondly, the downtown area along Kirchhoff Road, thirdly, City Hall, fourth, Kirchhoff Road from City Hall to Route 53 Expressway Bridge, and then uh, Kirchhoff Road west of Hicks. Gateway Park, there certainly are some enhancements that can be done at uh, reasonable costs. Uh, we can do some work there, we can do a little bit of work there, we can do a lot of work there to do the enhancements. Um, Kirchhoff Road downtown area, Don will talk about uh, some things that we can consider for the uh, existing street lights, as well as the uh, walkway lights if uh, desirable. There are some costs provided here. City Hall has some um, displays that uh, we're suggesting consideration for. Kirchhoff Road west of City Hall, we don't have outlets present there, so there would be, if there is a desire to do some enhanced lighting um, and decorations, we would have to uh, work up some cost estimates to uh, provide outlets. And then lastly, Kirchhoff Road west of Hicks Road. Um, several years ago, the city applied for street lighting grant assistance through the municipal conference. Um, we were approved programming-wise for all three locations being um, Plum Grove Road, Kirchhoff Road, and Rowling Road. Um, since that time, and we had um, programmed Plum Grove Road first, um, have done some engineering on that project, but uh, over the last year or so, as we learned that the um, formula for funding regional projects throughout the Chicagoland area is changing, um, this area, the Northwest Suburban area, expects to get a decrease in funding starting in 2020, 2021. And um, the Council, Council of Mayors Committee has decided that uh, prioritizing roadway projects and less priority to bike paths, street light projects, and resurfacing is in the works for this point. So um, kind of as an aside, getting the Kirchhoff Road funding approved has been significant because we really don't know that moving forward over future years how much or how little money will be available for resurfacing. But at this point, the street lighting um, grant opportunities have been frozen and um, there's no further um, process on those using grant funds. The city would have to fund street lighting improvements on its own. So the area of Kirchhoff west of Hicks certainly would be a significant endeavor in terms of putting up lighting and providing electrical to do um, um, decorations out there. Uh, that all being said, I'll turn it over to Don that can uh, provide some details. He's got some maps that are in your packet as well as out here and has some 
catalogs to share with you as well so you can kind of follow along. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Let me start by passing out catalogs for each one of you. Uh, I was asked to uh, prepare some information on uh, uh, doing some holiday decorating enhancements uh, uh, along Kirchhoff Road uh, in our downtown area and look at the area from uh, Wilkie to uh, Plum Grove Road. Um, in the maps that I've provided in the packet, um, I've outlined or I've uh, shown where we have electrical outlets on our light poles uh, that we can add uh, lighted decorations um, and where we don't have them. Uh, as Fred mentioned, we're limited once we get to Hicks Road going west because the only street lights over there are ComEd and ComEd won't allow us to put any holiday decorations on their light poles. Um, and we have no other means of uh, electric and we have very few parkway trees in that area. Um, they, when it comes to holiday decorations, we can be as extravagant as we want or be as minimal as kind of as we have been uh, over the last few years. Um, our minimalistic approach is because of staff and because of funding. Um, the uh, and uh, the abilities that we have to provide electric at the sites. Um, we do put up the lighted wreaths on the street lights in the downtown area. The wreaths we bought, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago. Um, and um, so they're old. They, uh, you know, we, we try to, you know, kind of spread them out and make them look like something each year. Uh, we've added bows to them and, and trying to spruce them up the best we can. But they're starting to show signs of the times. Um, the other thing is that the trees in the downtown areas, uh, when trees are small, they're easy to decorate. Uh, you can, and you can get quite a few done in the day with limited manpower. The trees are much bigger. Uh, the, uh, the amount of lights it takes to make them look like something, uh, it takes a lot more. And uh, like I said, the manpower and, and equipment uh, to, to do something with them. So we've been doing the best that we can, but there are plenty of opportunities. As in the catalog that I presented to you, I, I had pulled some ideas. And I'd like to start out with Gateway Park. As we talked about uh, last year with Gateway Park of doing some uh, improvements over there, one of the improvements that we talked about was with the electric. Uh, we have done some improvements and there's a number of ideas that we can do with sprucing it up a little bit more for the holidays, but we are limited to only being able to do it with LED lighting. Um, we still don't have the capacity out there to uh, put up any, you know, real big displays uh, with incandescent, um, you know, with incandescent uh, lighting. Um, so I, my recommendation would be, regardless of where we would add anything, that we would um, do it with LED lighting. And uh, so a couple of the things that I had pulled out of the catalog, these were just kind of my ideas. Um, I've shown up here and um, they are in your packet, but again, looking in the catalog, uh, there's, there's a number of different options and, you know, different uh, tastes for different folks. Um, so uh, I believe that Fred put in the document here some prices, which uh, again are in the, uh, in the council packet. And uh, depending upon how much or how little we want to do, uh, so Gateway Park with uh, what I've shown up there uh, would be, you know, approximately sixteen thousand dollars. And that this would be in addition to the lighting that we've been doing over the last couple of years of uh, the large uh, tree in the middle of the the um, uh, site there. The Kirchhoff Road downtown area. 
Um, 25 of the 41 street lights in this uh, corridor uh, they have lighted wreaths installed on them. Um, but we can continue to use those wreaths and supplement them with uh, some of the, the uh, uh, ideas that I presented in, in the handout. Um, the uh, cost uh, for you know doing uh, sparkle trees or whatever um, is you know eighty seven hundred to seventy eight hundred dollars. Um, we added uh, two years ago. We added some of those the, these lighted type decorations in the parking lot here at City Hall, and um, it does add a little bit of ambiance to uh, to it. But uh, the other thing is that if we wanted to uh, we can uh, you know put something on every one of the walkway lights and we've got 73 walkway lights in the downtown area um, so that's uh, but the cost for doing that uh, as you see um, the cost for doing that uh, would be between 92,000 and 127,000 so these are we aren't talking you know about these things being you know cheap and um, believe me I've tried to go through all the different types of stores that sell holiday decorations and look for things uh, that would be of a good use for commercial um, settings such as ours and what they have the residential type stuff just um, I, I don't feel would be you know would hold up to uh, to our our use. The uh, City Hall, uh, again in, in the council packet, I had given you uh, an idea of uh, adding a, a holiday, happy holidays uh, across the front out by the city seal and maybe a couple skaters or something. Um, again, minimally, you know, 2300 is $6,200. Um, as we go west on, on Kirchhoff Road from City Hall, uh, to Hicks Road, we do have some poles that have outlets. Uh, when we put in those poles several years ago, we put them in with outlets for uh, putting in uplighted decorations. Um, as I said, some of them have them because as the poles get knocked down, uh, we don't put them back up with electrical outlets because we haven't been putting up decorations, so we would have to add the outlets. So, uh, it, the cost for doing that and uh, yeah, it, it, again I've, I've shown it up on, on the one map and the map that's in your packet of which ones have outlets and which ones don't. When we get up to the two parks, the John Woods East, John Woods West sites, we could do as little or as much as council would like to do. Um, again, there's plenty of choices, um, you know, what I like may not be what you guys like and I'm you know open to whatever suggestions the council has and then we talked about the Kirchhoff Road uh, west of Hicks Road where we really don't have a whole lot of options to do anything so with that I will entertain questions well thank you sir it is kind of uh, challenging to be talking about this in August but it will be here shortly um, You've given us many different options, but my, my thought, um, because I, I've had uh, residents come forward and I've had some aldermen with discussion is, um, we need to be looking probably at the minimal versus the maximum end, but um, I'll just throw this out to start the discussion is that what I've heard from uh, a number of residents, is there something we just do to sort of refresh the downtown since we're now you know, businesses seem to be growing there. That's sort of becoming our economic engine. And you said, how many years has it been since we've updated? Oh, uh, we haven't bought. I mean, the wreaths were probably purchased 20 years ago. So anything else? And then the other area that we talked about was, you yeah. said east of, uh, I guess it would be the Jewel, the community church. There's light poles there. there there's light poles there that don't uh, that we don't put anything on currently but um, well we we only have so many wreaths and we hang up all the wreaths that we have but there are possibilities the poles are outfitted with outlets that we could add additional decorations so. we could 
buy, you know, as an example, we can buy 12 or 15 and intermingle them, you know, the old and the new, and stretch it out a little bit more. No, those were my only thoughts. Open it up to questions to the council. I also, I mean, for discussion purposes, we budget $3,000 for holiday decorations, which primarily are the uh, miniature lights that we use because the, uh, you know, when we put them up and they take a lot of abuse along Kirchhoff Road with the truck traffic and everything else and they are not reused. We, for the Gateway Park site and for the John Wood sites, we have switched to LED and those are reused year after year. And we've been doing that for the last couple of years, but typically we buy, you know, our hundred light count light strings at uh, two dollars and ninety seven cents, and throw them away year after year. They just for the amount of effort to try to take them down, and you know, uh, when you're talking, uh, you know, two thousand strings of lights, uh, it's quite time consuming. So. Um, but that's, and uh, our neighbors to the south of us just recently awarded a large contract uh, to enhance their holiday lights, and <laughs> I, that's $100,000 a year, so. <laughs> so again, well, before you, um, before the City Council is obviously, this is a discussion item. If you want to do this over multiple years, we get it. Um, I would make the uh, other comment that most of you know that when you come to City Hall during this season, the uh, toy soldiers that you see here, they're um, getting old. Those were actually purchased by the uh, Veterans Committee some time ago. Um, last year, we actually had someone repaint portions of them, so they are getting seasoned. Um, but again, if the City Council would like to slowly purchase new items, um, we can start doing that, but that's what we're here for, for the discussion for what would you like to do if you say, no, just keep the standard, we get that. But we figured after some discussions that we've had over the last few years and actually with residents now asking more, it's time to bring this discussion to the forefront. Thank you, Mr. Crumstein. <coughs> Council? Yes, Ms. Majakis. Thank you. Um, you know, it, it, it's... Um, sorry, let me think here. Um, from Meadow to Kirchhoff, or I'm sorry, Meadow to Owl is our main. And then we get to City Hall, and we've got a little, and then we die. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to maybe slowly try and enhance a little bit more at City Hall specifically. I think City Hall is pretty important. Um, and something with Gateway. Obviously, it's going to have to be in stages because it's not cheap stuff um so i would my you know i would love to see if maybe we could start with something fresh and new at the front of city hall i like your happy holidays or this season's greetings whatever um I, i'm not particular to anything but I, I think i'd like to see starting at city hall with a little bit of a lift um and then you know work outside of that in the next coming years so thank you thank you mr jenkins you can. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess the question I would ask first is um, if we approve something this year, where would the money come from? What we would be looking for, this would be budget in 2019, so it would not really be a 2018 purchasing. So we're not going to do anything this year? Um, this year in the budget, we do have $3,000 for what we really have, and then we have additional about $2,500 in there. But what we're really looking for is standard. Um, we've already started talking about um, 2019 at this point in time. How about like we just, we didn't approve the generator this year, where did all that money go? Still in the land and building fund, and we figured that's something that's more important for the land and building fund that has limited resources. And if the council says that you would like to spend some money, I would tell you that we could find money in the general fund, even if it came out to reserves in a limited amount, or we could actually tap um, the Community Event Foundation because they just had a nice event. Um, but again, those are things, if you really want to start in 2018, we could, but we were really looking for 2019 <coughs> to start some of this. My own opinion is we should start this year and spend somewhere between 25 and 50 grand. Thank you. 
Thank you. Mr. Manger. Thanks. Um, I read this. I thought about it. Um, this this coming year with, with relocating two stations, we just looked at some capital improvement projects. Uh, I, 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 I did think about this and I saw the dollars attached to it. Um, I, I personally just want to focus on uh, the projects we have started and have on hand. Um, and, and actually, I'm not interested in proceeding any further than what we normally do with the $3,000. Um, and even past that, before we bought more stuff that we would be storing um, on the other uh, nine or ten months that we're not using them, uh, even before we got to that point, I would be... I'd probably be more interested in talking about our uh, replacing our old public works, which is probably where we would store them. Um, so I'm not interested at all at, at this point in time, and there are a, a couple other things I'd be more interested in before we even before I was even uh, interested in coming back to this. Just just so that's out there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manger. Mr. Williams, sir. Um, in the uh, estimates that you uh, you mentioned, the three thousand set aside for these things and everything else, uh, does that money spent include uh, man hours that uh, to put up the lights on the trees and that sort of thing? No, no, that's only for so. the items. So it, it's uh, that's just the items themselves. Uh, yes, sir. No man hours included for uh, putting it on there. No, sir. Uh, what do you anticipate? Do you have a guess as to what uh, uh, redoing the trees might cost uh, man hour wise this year? To redo the trees? Well, well the, to do the trees like we have well, done we traditionally. Typ typically, that. we have four staff members for two weeks on holiday decorations. During the regular hours. We can calculate that for Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Anyone else? <laughs> Further comments? Well, Mr. Canton, did uh, you had a thought there? You your suggestion was twenty-five to fifty grand this year. Well, the thought. Any other discussion on it? Uh, well, I guess we'll take a straw vote. Straw vote to see if uh, unless someone comes up with a number, spend uh, a minimal amount, give staff direction to come up with twenty-five thousand dollars for this, which I guess. Do we have twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars to spend this year on this? No, I would have to find the money between all yeah. those different well, things. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Point, so that, that's so yeah, I would I it. would amend that to five to ten thousand. Okay. So if staff, we'll put the question: If staff can find ten thousand dollars to um, find to money to refresh. The decorations is that a is that a good word? Begin begin, begin to refresh them. So if the staff can find ten thousand dollars, we could start this year. Could we have a vote of staff? I mean, of council that would be in favor of moving forward with that? Well, I think to be fair, you need to ask the yeah. first call. Oh, sorry, Mr. Cannon. I mean, I told you what I asked for. Well, but. we could start with twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Let's start with if staff can find twenty-five thousand dollars. How many in, uh, on the council would be willing to give staff direction to find $25,000 to refresh the decorations? All in favor, one. Opposed? I'm abstaining. Okay, the second time around, if we can find $10,000 to refresh the decorations in downtown Meadows, how many on the council would be in favor of that giving direction? Two. Against? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your effort, sir. I guess that there is one more question that I would have is would the council want us to put more money in for 2019? Or would that be a budget? Well, okay. I, it just, it's a planning document. So if the straw vote tonight is to add more, we would have an additional line item. Well, okay, how many would then be in favor for staff to come back with a proposal to add money for the 2019 budget, if they could find it? Raise your hand. We have three opposed. We have three, four, one opposed, so it fails, so thank you. The final item tonight is obviously an item that some 
folks on the City Council have actually seen before and before we turn it over to Alderman Cannon who did the write-up and brought this up before what we, we do bring up is obviously this has been discussed a few years ago it did pass the City Council and then was vetoed by the mayor at that point in time um, it is a discussion that we've had in the past and obviously we need to have this discussion now because we are in the budgeting process so again with that I turn it over to Alderman Cannon who has done the write-up uh, thank you Barry um, everybody has seen my write-up this is my feelings I know um, I've discussed this with a number of aldermen and I've gotten everything from we shouldn't get paid anything to some people think we should get paid for every meeting um, as I brought up in the past we even though it was approved last time it was way up vetoed um, our neighbor Palatine which we seem to get compared with a lot pays their alderman about $12,000 a year uh, I'm not embarrassed about bringing this up I've been on the seat for over seven years I spend a lot of time doing this job I'm proud of the work I do for the city and for more importantly for the residents I think the position is underpaid at its present rate that's an opinion obviously and uh, I think at minimum uh, we should get a raise of some some type and I think there's also um, I think a thing that we really lack at is if sometimes aldermen and always the mayor are asked to leave town to do things on behalf of the city and they get reimbursed not even for mileage um, I think a minimum of a $25 expense payoff for each meeting outside of town would be at least a minimal reasonable starting point um, I guess you know my thoughts I'd like to hear what other people think and we'll go from there Thank you, Mr. Cannon. We'll open it up to the floor. Comments from anybody? Mr. Banjo. Thank you. Um, I haven't changed, in my opinion, in terms of alderman pay. I'm not interested in, in an increase. Um, I think Alderman Cannon brings up a good point. When you're leaving the city uh, for a meeting, I have no problem with a expense payout. So I'll, I'll support that if we do a straw poll. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Banjo. Any other comments from any other? I support what Alderman Banjo just said. I have I voted against our pay increase, and you know, especially now that uh, a couple fire stations are being built, more money out to the residents. Even though it's minimal, what we get, it is what it is, and you know, the residents know what we get paid. Nothing's hidden about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't think though that it's it's a position that. Um, any of us are supporting our families on and we knew that when we came and accepted this seat so um, I will agree with what Alderman Bandra said though if you have to go out you know outside of the city to a meeting or something and you know 25 dollars for gas or whatever I'm I'm fine with that so thank you thank you any other comments from anybody else my only comment is that uh, you know as Alderman I received my stipend and I was involved in Crime Stoppers, community events, other things, and I just figured that stipend was meant to pay for my expenses, whether it was gas or whether the mayor sent me out to an event. And when I became mayor, I mean, I probably have two or three events a month that I attend, and I just take that money out of the stipend that the residents have given me. And uh, if we break even at the, S the end of the year, that's great. And then if there's stuff left over there's plenty of places that we can donate it to i know some folks here you know community events foundation and there's uh groups we have in town so i i look at it that uh what uh i receive is uh, a stipend for me to help do this job and represent the city so i'm fine with what it is i don't wish to have any pay increase whatsoever thank you Any further comments? I guess the uh, I guess the only thing that we've heard is one is I'm sorry, Mr. Bander, how would you put it? An expense? You're, sure. If you're going to call a question for the Alderman Cannon's suggestions, sounds uh, reasonable. Twenty five dollars for any out of city uh, trip for a committee. Okay, we'll put that. So we'll get a straw vote from the. Uh, Council, all that would be uh, in favor of doing a $25 expense account for members of the council that are doing business outside the city. Raise your hand. We have three. 
opposed? One. Okay, that, that one uh, failed. Now, Mr. Cannon, um, you want to put a number to no. it or just? Obviously, I lost it. It's, it's done. Okay, I guess the vote you did ask to see if the any member on the council would be in favor of raising the alderman's salary. All in favor? That motion or that the straw vote fails. So, Mr. Crumstock, anything else? That is it for tonight, but thank you. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved.